Next, we come to the planetary letters. <clears throat> Absorb for a moment this image, the essential meaning of this image. Now we'll add in the mother letters. Now, this does some interesting things. Um, <clears throat> number one, it visually establishes three pillars, okay? <clears throat> the pillar of mercy, the pillar of severity, and the pillar of equilibrium. This is the pillar of self, the levels of self that we define in Kabbalah. <clears throat> so it establishes three pillars. It also is the first crossings of paths that these planetary paths cross all three of the mothers. And it's the paths of self, the descending self that cross the mother letters. Now, a crossing of paths is important. It occurs only here and then only in the hidden paths. The hidden paths cross several paths as they descend. But here are the only times that the lettered paths cross any other paths, and it's the mother letters that they cross. And this is significant. So, <clears throat> we have the three pillars. We have the pillar of mercy. These are connections between Hokma and Gedjula, and then Gedjula and Netzach the pillar of severity, of form. These are the connections between Bina and Gebura, and Gebura and Chod, okay? Then, the pillar of self. This is between Kether, the one self, and Tiferet, the solitary self. That little reflection of the eye, okay? Then the connection between the solitary self and the sentient self, between the mental body and the astral body. So, supernal body, mental body, excuse me, astral body, and then the connection between the astral body and the physical body, the physical self, the um, <clears throat> static self in Malkuth, okay? So, <clears throat> these three descents of energy, they all are a descent from one level of self to another level of self, from one realm to another realm, okay? Every single one of them represents this descent. Now, <clears throat> got to be careful here, and remember that it is one thing, the tree of life is one thing, and <clears throat> it all exists at once. It's not a sequential descent of awareness, except in the temporal realm. That is how we experience it in the temporal realm. But from the perspective of the I, it all exists. <clears throat> there is no unfolding from the perspective of the I, which is, of course, the overriding perspective of the whole. So, yeah. It's the parts in the temporal realm that experience it's sequentially, and it's just a matter of our perspective on the matter, okay? Because our perspective is a temporal perspective. But 
So there is not really a descent, but that's how we are going to describe it. It's how we essentially experience it, being creatures of the temporal realm. Okay. <clears throat> So, let's go through the planets one at a time. We'll start with Saturn, which is the topmost um, <clears throat> path here, between the path of Beth, uh, between Kether and Tiferet. Now, Saturn to the ancients was the great limiter. It was the outermost reaches of the human universe, okay? Beyond that was the unknowable, really, the, the zodiac and the prime mover, okay? <clears throat> God. <clears throat> so Saturn was, had these two natures, one as the limiter. This is the limit that uh, your awareness uh, penetrates the universe, okay? <clears throat> the other was the, 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 uh, the doorway through which the gifts from God entered the universe. It had these two faces, really. The face of death, the limiter, and the face of uh, life, giving, <clears throat> the provider, divine providence. This was Saturn. So Saturn, in this case, being that transition from the I to the uh, <clears throat> solitary self, from the infinite I to the one little tiny reflection of the I amidst an infinite ocean of other reflections of the I. So we can't really separate <coughs> Tiferet here from, <coughs> we can't really separate the individual experience from the total experience, from the universal experience of Tiferet, because they are so close in Tiferet. <clears throat> that little reflection of the eye is intimately and directly connected to the eye, the total, you know, infinite expanse of the eye, its immediate connection. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> that in, in coming down into the uh, the solitary self, it's at one time it's a restriction of awareness and at the same time it's an explosion of the awareness into an infinite number of parts. Okay. Then that <clears throat> solitary self, that little reflection of the eye, passes its light down into the uh, sentient self through the path of Resh, the sun. It casts its light as sunlight into the astral realm. It creates the astral realm out of its own sunlight, essentially. Okay. And that path is just that it's radiant. It radiates. <clears throat> it warms everything it touches. <clears throat> and then that sentient self, empowered by that sunlight, sends its own light as moon through Tav, the path of the moon, into Malkuth, 
the temporal present moment. This is the path of rhythm, of time itself. Because at, at the time that these symbols uh, were coalesced in this way, um, we had a, a lunar calendar. It wasn't a solar calendar. The, the solar ruled the seasons, but it was the moon that ruled time at the local level, at the level of the person. <clears throat> the cycles of the moon, that is what this path is. So the path of Beth and Saturn is the descent from the supernal realm to the mental realm. The path of Resh and the sun is the descent from the mental realm to the astral realm. And the path of Tav and the moon is a descent from the astral realm into the physical realm, okay, the material realm. Now, <clears throat> the pillar of mercy. Okay, in Hokma, the, the root of the pillar of mercy, Hokma spreads throughout this whole pillar in the same way that Kether descends through the whole pillar of awareness, okay? So, in Hokma is the essential meaning. It is undifferentiated, it is an infinite ocean of essential meaning. And just as the descent into Tiferet from Kether was an explosion of uh, in that infinite number of parts here in this descent from Chokma to Gedjula it is also an explosion of the infinite bits of essential meaning the infinite number of essential meanings explode into existence in Gedjula, in the same way as that path from Kether to Tiferet. So, this is the path of Jupiter and Gimel. Okay. <clears throat> that infinite number of essential meanings is suddenly expressed in Gedjula, in combination. They're not any of them singular. They're all in combination and connecting with each other in Gedjula. Okay? And this then becomes subjective meaning. It's no longer an objective essential meaning. It is a subjective meaning. It is a meaning that is involved with other, okay? <clears throat> that is the descent of Jupiter. Then, that uh, relationship of meaning to meaning in Gedjula <clears throat> descends <clears throat> into Netzach, as subjective meaning. It's <clears throat> meaning that uh, <clears throat> is totally in relation and reaction to other in their separation but still that attraction. And this is resonance. And this is the descent of Venus and the path of calf. <clears throat> so this is really the birth of subjective meaning and emotion, astral emotion. This is the descent from the mental realm 
to the astral realm through Venus, okay? And the pillar of severity, <clears throat> the pillar of form, as opposed to force, mercy, <clears throat> we begin in Bina with the essential form. That undifferentiated, infinite ocean of form, the, the, the essence of form itself universal form, the necessity of everything having form through which essential meaning expresses itself, okay, descends into Gebura, individualized form, <clears throat> through Mars. And in Gibura, we have the form of our own power. Each individual particle of I has its own unique power in Gibura, which is empowered by Mars. Mars is that crystallization of power that descends from Bina into the temporal realm. Okay? That's Gebura. And further form descends from Gebura to Hod through the path of Mercury and Peth. Or Peh, excuse me. <clears throat> Peh and Mercury. And that form becomes subjective form, personalized form, my form. That is all communicated through Mercury into Hot. Okay? So, the path of Saturn takes us from Kether to Tiferet from the I, the one self, to the uh, solitary self, that individualized little reflection of the I. Okay? Likewise, the path of <clears throat> Jupiter takes us from Hogma to Gajula, from the supernal realm to the mental realm. And the path of Mars, Daleth, takes us from Bina to Gebura, from the supernal realm to the mental realm. So these three take us from supernal to mental. Then the sun, Resh, takes us from Tiferet to Yesod, from mental to astral. And a calf, the path of Venus, takes us from Gedula to Netzach, from mental to astral. And the path of Pe, Mercury, takes us from mental to astral. And then the path of the moon of Tav takes everything into the physical. <clears throat> so, descending the ladder of the stations of self, <clears throat> which again are just arbitrary human constructs to try to understand this one thing that really doesn't have these divisions within itself. Okay. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> it gives the impression of descent. And that, that's valid in terms of our understanding. But it's not valid 
in terms of truly comprehending the whole. The whole exists as a single thing, uh, fate accompli. You know, it's all, it's whole. <clears throat> it doesn't descend, <clears throat> it just is. Okay? That's one thing that uh, we really have to understand when approaching this symbol. <clears throat> that it's describing something that, that already is, that is complete and whole, <clears throat> but the symbol we're using gives us these spatial <clears throat> ways of thinking um, that imply downward movement or upward movement, and that's false. If anything, it's lateral movement within self. Now, according to this diagram, there is no direct uh, connection between Kether, the crown, and Malkuth, domain. Okay? That's what it looks like here. And likewise, no direct connection between Kether and Yesod. Nor between Tiferet and Malkuth. But that's simply not the case. When we navigate that inner world of the awareness, it's a lateral movement. It's not an up and down movement. <laughs> We're not reaching to higher levels of self. We're reaching to other levels of self. So it's not a, a climb or, or oh, a fall. It's all lateral. Awareness is one thing. It's not divided into these little bits. But this helps us understand that one thing. So we're going to deal with these little bits. So now we've added seven more little bits to the picture. And we have a certain structure that's developed. A certain uh, solidity. A stability. But it's still not stable enough. We have more. We have the diagonal paths, which is the next video will be about the zodiacal paths. Okay. So, until then, bye-bye.